So when you think about a single uh, eye drops uh, that is administrated topically, uh, you will have at the end of the day only five to 10% uh, of the drug that will get into the eye. And the reason is uh, that these single drops has to uh, face a lot of challenge before getting inside the eye. Number one is the tear film clearance. Uh, as soon as you blink just one time, you go from a 30 microliter to 10 microliter uh, eye drops and it will be washed away by the tear film and the quantity of the drug that's staying at the uh, ocular surface will be most of it uh, reabsorbed by the systemic circulation. And after that, the drug will still have to cross all the physiological barrier of the, of the eye. Number one is the tear film. Uh, number two is the corneal barrier, which is a pretty challenging uh, barrier to cross. Uh, you will have uh, the cornea is surrounded by two uh, rich lipid layer, which is the endothelium and the epithelium. And even though you could cross it, then you will have tight junction as well. So the tight junction are, are a, a kind of a big barrier to cross uh, the cells. And after that, you will also have a barrier inside the eye. So if the journey continue in order to reach the back of the eye, uh, you will have an extra barrier, which is the blood uh, aqueous barrier uh, at the level of the iris plant. So that might explain why uh, we have to uh, uh, instill so frequently eye drops in order to uh, reach the uh, significant level of drug inside the eye. So the three main challenge that uh, uh, nanoparticles uh, would face in order to improve ocular drug delivery, it's number one, increasing the residence time at the precorneal surface. Uh, if it does so, it helps to uh, improve all the ocular surface therapy because the drug will be available for a longer period of time. Number two, it will be to increase the penetration of the drug through the corneal barrier and it can do so uh, by two main mechanisms. Number one, it will be through the cells uh, by something called endocytosis. And number two, uh, it will be between the cells via what we call the paracellular uh, pathway and we have some material that are able to transiently open the tight junction and get uh, through this corneal barrier. Uh, by doing so, it will help uh, to improve the bioavailability inside the intraocular tissue and improve the treatment for uh, uh, intraocular infection or inflammation. Uh, and number three, it will be to help uh, for drug delivery. So when the uh, release of the drug will be done uh, in a slower way, it will help, for example, for retinal disease and chronic disease. So by doing so, we'll be able to treat for a longer period of time because we will slow down the process of drug release inside the eye. And for people that have, for example, a retinal chronic disease, uh, they will be able to receive much less uh, frequently uh, the drug because the drug will stay inside the eye and uh, the particles will release slowly uh, the drug over a longer period of time. So when you talk about nanoparticles, uh, usually it can be characterized by four main features. Uh, and according to the need, we will customize the nanoparticles and the nanocarrier uh, according to what, which effect we want to reach inside the eye. Uh, number one is the material. We can use different type of material according to the uh, physical chemical property of the nanoparticles. Uh, we can use, for example, mucoadhesiveness uh, property of some uh, material in order to increase the resilience time because it will create uh, bonds with the mucin layer, that's number one. Uh, we can also use a different way uh, to coat the uh, drugs with nanomaterial in order to uh, open uh, the tight junction or in order to improve uh, and increase the bioavailability by uh, um, activating endocytosis at the level of the cells and this way we could penetrate more as through the corneal barrier, but we can also, for example, customize the shells of the uh, nano cuttings in order to uh, control and adjust much better the release of the drug. So that, that's the material is, uh, is one of the main features. Number one, number two is, uh, is the size of the nanoparticles, because we know that the smaller will be the nanoparticles and the better it will penetrate through the tissue. Uh, at the same time, we know that the smaller is the nanoparticle, 
and then uh, the faster will be the degradation because we don't have enough uh, drug that we can load inside so we really have to find the right balance between uh, a better penetration and uh, a slow release of the drug and then we have also the shape of the uh, nanoparticle that can also play a significant role in time of uh, penetration of the drug and we have also the surface we can resurface and really engineer uh, the, the surface of the nanoparticle and this way we can connect any type of ligand in order to target specific uh, component inside the eye it can be cells it can be intracellular components and this way we could significantly reduce the toxicity in the surrounding tissue so what is fascinating in uh, nanotechnology is that usually we know nanotechnology uh, and nanomedicine uh, to improve ocular drug delivery system. But if you look around uh, the field of nanotechnology, we also have nanotechnology that is applied in optics. And very recently we uh, started to see a couple of technologies that apply the nanotechnology not in order to load uh, some drugs and to carry uh, some drugs, but to change and to modify the optical property uh, of the eye. Uh, one of the technologies is called nanodrops, and uh, nanodrops is a, a biodegradable nanoparticle that will be inserted inside the epithelium in order to modify the refractive index of the patient. In this way, we could control the refraction and modify the refraction. So it might be in the future uh, a treatment of uh, myopia or presbyopia through insulation of eye drops. Uh, another type of, uh, of uh, technology is this time using nanoparticle in order to create a coatings inside the lens that we could activate with a specific wavelength from outside and this way we could modify the reflectivity. So by modifying the reflectivity we can either trigger some zoom capacity which would be great for people with AMD for example that needs to magnify the vision or even to adjust the focus and have a glassy that might focus in a millisecond just by activating a nano coating uh, that is inside the, the lens. So I'm sure we'll see a lot of uh, different technology using this time nanotechnology for their optical property uh, that might completely change the landscape of visual correction.